Welcome to a noob's guide to Bellicor. This is Bellicor. He's a dark and brooding figure that towers over others with a voice like thunder and abs of steel, and that's just his voice actor. A playable legendary lord in Total War Warhammer 3, Bellicor is both a reward for completing the Realms of Chaos narrative campaign and his own faction on the Big Immortal Empire's sandbox map. Bellicor casts a malignant shadow across the darkness of time. He's the first mortal to ever become a demon prince, came within an elf's hair of conquering the known world, and is the only being to ever look at Volkmar the Grim and think, yes, that could be a hood ornament. What Bellicor's mortal name was, and whether he was a man, elf, dwarf, or some other race has long been forgotten to history, but when the Great Polar Gates collapsed, demons and magic flowed into the world unchecked. Bellicor was the first guy to realize that in the Chaos Wasteland, you're either the one tied to the front of the wagon or the guy driving it. So he stopped fighting the baddies and joined them. What unspeakable acts he committed to draw the attention of all four Chaos Gods isn't remembered, but they must have been especially vile as the ruinous powers lured Bellicor into the Chaos Wastes, where he sauntered directly into the realms of Chaos. They rewarded his courage by blowing up his body and reassembling it in their own image, Adam, by excruciating Adam. Bellicor was gifted the cunning of Zinch, the pride of Slanesh, the strength of Corn, and the ever-shifting cloud of toxic gas that Nurgle leaves behind in any room. But even this wasn't enough for Bellicor. As the first and only demon prince, his soul was a prize each god coveted, as the Chaos Gods were a lot like small children and then they couldn't share and wanted a general to conquer the world in their name. This escalated into a bidding war for Bellicor's soul, with Bellicor demanding ever more power from each as they competed to get into that boy's hole. I feel like you're saying boy's hole, and it's clearly soul. In a move of Bukaki brilliance, he had all the gods bestow their gifts on him at the same time, then excused himself to the mortal realms to clean up, out of their reach and with all their gifted powers still intact. As you'd expect, in-game, Bellicor is a champion of chaos undivided, and can draw on the powers of all four gods. Starting the game with access to all four's chaos gifts unlocked, and providing a quick way to bankrupt yourself on turn one if you try and spend all your souls to fill those slots. His unholy manifestations call on the powers of each as well, with the most notable being the Cursor's Boon from Zinch. It permanently opens a chaos rift in whatever province Bellicor is located when he cast it, allowing you to instantly traverse between chaos rifts all across the map. Bellicor's armies, likewise, have access to the rosters of all four gods, giving Bellicor a ludicrous selection of demons to pick from. His faction was called the Demonic Legions in 6th edition Warhammer for a reason, with a faction ability that reduces their upkeep so you can keep more of them at a time, as well as doubling down on their strengths. Bellicor also has extra authority for each Chaos God in his armies, which helps him to recruit and upkeep all of their units for cheaper and to ensure he fields the full gamut available to him. Add the new Champions of Chaos DLC, where Bellicor can dedicate any warrior to any god, and he's got over a hundred potential units to recruit in his campaign. It's enough to leave you spoiled for choice, but it also makes Bellicor's campaign difficult for beginners or anyone that's not more intimately familiar with the new Warriors of Chaos update than they are with their own hands. As there's so many choices, it's easy to get lost in his options and awesomeness, which is exactly what happened to Bellicor eons ago. Cities fell in his path, armies were trampled to dust, and after a few hundred years, he'd nearly conquered the entire world. But Bellicor no longer wanted to just command mortals. He wanted to be worshipped as a fifth god of chaos. To empower himself further, Bellicor would stand naked atop dark towers that reached into the stratosphere where the winds of magic blew, letting the raw energies of chaos caress his 16-pack abs as he became a creature of living shadow, tangible only when he wished to be, a master of terror and illusion who feasted upon mortal fears. But like so many hippie sunbathers, he caught the attention of the authorities. For only the second time in their entire existence, the ruin and his pantheon agreed on something. The gods of chaos, have I not fed you souls? Have I not given you the world? Give me more power. They were going to teach that sorry son of a biscuit eater Bellicor a lesson. Destroying Bellicor's body and leaving him an insubstantial shadow drifting between the worlds. 
Bellicor's essence floated around in the realms of chaos for thousands of years, begging any god that would listen for another chance to set foot on the mortal world again. But your average dark god is as forgiving as Elden Ring. He wanted to conquer the world? Fine. Then from now on, Bellicor would only be let out to crown the next ever chosen, reducing him to a delivery boy for the crown of domination, and leaving this hate-filled spirit a permanent bridesmaid, but never a bride. Twelve times Bellicor has fulfilled that role as the harbinger and advisor of the Ever Chosen, seething as he's been forced to lead the Demonic Legions in someone else's name, always looking for a way to stay out on bail, but inevitably getting thrown back in the pokey when these lesser mortals fail. Between sanctioned visits, Bellicor sneaks into the bedrooms of unsuspecting aspirants and whispers promises of glory and power into their dreams. Anyone dumb enough to actually summon him then curses Bellicor sudden yet inevitable betrayal as he kills them and takes over their armies. This corrupting influence is Bellicor's unique faction mechanic in-game, as any human he beats in battle or performs hero actions against can be turned into a recruitable demon prince a few turns later. It's too bad at launch, the parameters for it to work are so narrow it's like a camel trying to pass through the eye of a needle. It ain't gonna happen. Well, I guess it could, but it would require a sausage grinder in a 10-foot splash zone. Bellicor's immense ego means his ambitions always outstrip his abilities, as he just can't stop himself from trying to take over the world one more time. This inevitably draws the attention to the Chaos Gods, who then put him back in chains once they get wind of his escape, leaving him another great mind perpetually held down by the man. In Warhammer 3, he's up to these same old tricks again as the antagonist of the Realms of Chaos campaign, tempting our boy Yuri into killing the bear god Urson, all so Bellicor can take his power and ascend to godhood. But as this campaign is confusingly a prequel to the Total War Warhammer timeline, Clearly it didn't work out. For the Immortal Empire's map, things are different. The 13th Ever Chosen has emerged, and Bellicor was beamed down to crown him Princess of Chaos. It's no wonder Bellicor can't stand the guy. Bellicor had also been working on a plan to take the crown of domination for himself, gathering enough power to gain physical form by holding the lands and magics of Albion, which coincidentally is why he begins in Albion for his Immortal Empire's campaign. Bellicor meant to power up and then rip out Archeon's heart and feast on his soul in the full view of the Dark Gods, but you know, his plan fell apart and he was once again forced to perform the Dark Coronation, muttering fury-filled curses beneath his breath the entire time. But crowning a new Ever Chosen let the demon off the hook again, which means it's back to world conquering business as usual. Sure, he could challenge Archeon for control of the Chaos Armies directly, but considering the man is a walking meme farm, it's better to manipulate events from the shadows. I mean, what's one more Ever Chosen to outlive? Because for a dude who's older than most dirt, Bellicor is slightly underwhelming in melee combat, though he makes up for it with magic from the Lore of Shadows. And if you peer through the gloom, you'll see that he actually performs a pretty Pretty neat trick that makes him nearly unbeatable in campaign. Combine the Lore of Shadows spells that debuff morale with his unique skill, Whispers in the Darkness, that gives a constant AoE that removes immune to psychology from enemy units while also lowering their leadership. As a demon, Bellicor already has fear and terror that make enemy units around him waver and route faster, but with his Lord of Torment skill, Bellicor now regains help and magic whenever they start to worry and run away, making him a walking demonic fear bomb who only has to stand there menacingly and be too angry to die. Even his quest weapon, the Shadow Blade, leans into this fury. The Shadow? The Shadow? The Shadow. Unlocked at level 7, the blade hungers for souls, and with each kill stacks armor piercing and melee attack to terrifying heights. Only time will tell if his abilities will be enough to dethrone Archeon and take his place as the ever chosen of chaos, but one thing is certain, Bellicor won't be playing second fiddle to anyone ever again. The end times are well and truly nigh, and it's time for Mr. Tall, Dark, and Brooding to make his next move. It may not be his first attempt, or even his millionth, but you have to give credit for tenacity. bellicor has been at this for ages, and has the tantric stamina to outlast them all. Other warriors of chaos may be stronger, but you won't find anyone with more persistence. The Father in Shadow is back in the mortal realm, and if he gets his way, the whole world will live in his pall. Because what's the point of ascended immortality if you're just going to have to spend all your time serving someone else? 
And on that thought, this has been a noob's guide to Bellacore. Thanks for watching.